Etsy has just released the 2024 trend report based on historical data, year-over-year -year data. I want to go through it with you guys so you can prepare and do everything possible to have a successful 2024. Let's go. Hey everyone, what is going on? What is happening? Welcome back to the Handmade and Beyond podcast. I'm your host, LL. Glad to be back with you guys as usual. And I can't believe we're already starting to dive into 2024. Think about how we can be successful, certain things that we can focus on. And 2023 is out of here already, which is kind of crazy. So as we are rolling ever so closer to 2024, it's time to start talking about ways that we can grow and improve our Etsy business. And one of the best ways to do that is by focusing on trends, looking at where things are going to go for the coming year based on your niche, your business, but also based on other data that's out there. Etsy releases this trend report every single year for the coming year. So I think it's always a good thing to go through the trend report, see how it applies to you, see what you can uh, learn from it, take away from it, and apply it to your business. Keep in mind, there's not every trend in this. This isn't always accurate, uh, 100%. We can't always gauge everything to a T, but they base this on year-over-year uh, -year data, historical data, so they kind of know. That's why I don't focus on every little uh, niche and sub-niche. You have to do that for your own business. So this isn't the end-all, be-all, but there is takeaways from this that if you can apply any of this to your business and your niche, then so be it. But think about your business, your niche, and how uh, what what is going to be trending, what is going to be popular, look at past listings that were uh, best sellers, uh, past trends in your business that were best sellers, and how can you do that again for this coming year. So that's the biggest takeaway from that I kind of want to get, you know, get across to you as we're going through this trend report. So let's dive in and go through this and kind of see what the trends say so you don't have to go through and, and look at this yourself. You can listen or watch me do it for you and uh, see how you can apply this to your business. So there are the there's three main categories that they broke this down into. Uh, gifting and occasions, decor trends, and style trends. So we're gonna go through each, see what the data says, see kind of what the trends, um, quote unquote trends are gonna be for this coming year. So gifting and occasions. Some obvious ones here, New Year's, if you have New Year's stuff or you can make New Year's stuff, um, that is going to be important. Goal setting, that is important every single year. Journals, motivational sayings on wall art, jewelry mugs, um, keep shop, stuff to keep shoppers on track, uh, personal goals on track for 2024. It begins with the new year. Um, you see it every single year. Neaten up, desk organizers, date books, address stamps offer a tidy start to the new year. So people kind of want to start the new year off fresh, focus on the things that they haven't been focusing on. So it's kind of aligned with that. Um, paper goods like planners are inspiring shoppers to start the year anew. Cozy textures, peak hibernation season calls for warm materials in home decor and wardrobe. So you folks that are not in Florida and they're freezing your butts off, warm wardrobe stuff uh, is always best sellers uh, or good to try and sell if you have that type of, of niche, uh, niche, if I can talk. Healthy intentions. This is kind of along the same lines as you know the, the New Year's resolutions and stuff that I was just talking about. Wellness-oriented products, cooking tools, meal planning. There was 11% 11, 11 year-over-year increase in searches on Etsy for meal prep. Meal prep is a huge part of diet and doing well for the new year. So that may be something that you want to take advantage of if that is in your niche. Home updates. Come January, many shoppers look to improve their living spaces with fresh accents and DIY upgrades. I got news for you. DIY uh, projects, home projects upgrades people are more involved in that than ever before that's not going anywhere i know me and my wife do all kinds of projects around the house constantly uh, she always finds new stuff for me to do <laughs> which I, I always thank her because i'm so bored thinking of things to do not really but she always finds new projects and once they're done they look really cool but it's like always always something 
Valentine's Day, again, holidays, occasions, those are all trends that you guys should be focusing on if it works for your niche. Those are great ways to improve revenue and sales throughout the year if you can release holiday type products, uh, occasion type products, seasonal type products. So Valentine's Day is no different. Um, there's an 18% increase in, uh, in searches on Etsy for custom dog gifts. Uh, so this is, uh, I guess they put this in love for all. Uh, every year it seems a list of Valentine's Day recipients grows. Think beyond significant others to kids, extended family, friends, coworkers, pets, and members of the community. So Valentine's Day is expanding. Everyone deserves to love and be loved. So this is kind of in line with that. And just dogs in general are hugely popular. I have two dogs. I love my dogs. And as dog owners, we think of crazy things to do for our dogs that we like, and we think that they like it, but they probably don't. <laughs> Just like dressing them up, we think that they like it. But um, my one dog just definitely does not like being dressed up. He, uh, If you put clothes on him, he will sit, he won't move, he'll sit still, and then in about five minutes, he'll lay, lay out this blood-curdling scream, which is um, terrible to hear. So he does not like being, so we don't dress him up anymore. My other dog, she she doesn't care if she's dressed up or not. All right, all out romance offer creative ways to express affection with bold blooms, rich reds, and nostalgic script fonts. Feminine clothing features ruffles, lace, and luxe textures like satin um, for Valentine's Day. If that's your thing, those are some ideas for you. Charming jewelry, jewelry is always hugely popular uh, on Etsy and elsewhere. So if this is your niche, maybe this is something that you wanna focus on so there's a 106% year-over-year increase in searches on Etsy for gold charm necklaces, charm bracelets, charm necklaces, charm type stuff, interchangeable jewelry. That stuff has been hugely pop popular the last couple of years. It looks like that trend is going to continue. Practical and personal items, custom and custom entertaining items like charcuterie boards or whiskey decanters are sure to elevate any host toolkits. Um, I know we like to, to host gatherings with our neighbors and whatnot. So this type of stuff, personalized um, gift giving type items, personalized type items, curated items. I mean, those are, those are hugely popular. Nostalgic tokens, lockets offer practical romantic way to hold treasure memories. So lockets, I guess, are coming, making a comeback. Everything goes full circle. You know, all these trends uh, will come full circle. A lot of the stuff from the 90s, early 2000s is starting to make a comeback. Decadent textures, velvet turns any object into a little luxury. We're seeing custom velvet makeup bags pick up in popularity. 4,400, what is that? 4,304%, Jesus, <laughs> numbers are hard. Your year increase in searches on Etsy for personalized velvet jewelry boxes. So velvet's making comeback. Cool. <laughs> Who would have thought? Bury everything. Opt in for rich rosy tones or sweet fruit motifs in paper goods, apparel, and decor. So these look like they are um, uh, they, they're, uh, dish towels. Dish towels or kitchen towels, whatever you want to call them. So those are on the rise. I, I mean, we have tons of dish towels. We like you know, ones that have funny sayings and stuff like that. So I can see where they are picking up in popularity. Foodie fun, decorative objects inspired by tasty treats. Look at home in kitchens, on dining, on dining tables, and as Valentine's decor. So, uh, I mean, we like to host dinner parties and have company over. So that's kind of aligned with that. Artistic experiences, crafting kits for kids. That became hugely popular during uh, covid uh, even adult kits, and it looks like that's still a popular thing, just because it's it's different, right? It's 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 a different way to entertain. You kind of get you you kind of get your your hands dirty, so to speak. I always say it. That's kind of uh, maybe you're not getting your hands dirty, but you're getting you're getting involved. You're getting active with it. So that's a that's always a good thing to think of uh, if you can offer something like that. Two hundred fifty percent year of your increase in searches on Etsy for kid crafts. So we're always thinking of ways to keep the kids busy so they're out of our hair and not causing mischief. So maybe a kid craft kit is what you want to do. Nautical nides, nautical nods, not nides. Sea life and beachy decor are finding their way into home into the winter months as mood boosting Valentine's Day gift. All right, so we want to think of 
warmer times where we can be by the water and uh, we don't want to think about how cold it is outside. So that makes sense, I guess. All right, not neutral hearts, um, calming palette of nudes and creams. All right, that doesn't really tell me much. Uh, Evercare decor, evergreen decor. Holy crap, man, I'm having trouble reading today. Evergreen decor, heartwarming decor that works beyond just the holidays, offers shoppers flexibility and lasting value. All right, so heartwarming decor. That's a little general there. We like to, I like more specifics. Uh, everyday items, household staples like mugs, dish towels help recipients feel the love and serene pastel hues and special handmade touches. So, uh, like I said before, dish towels are, are making up. Uh, are pretty popular. Mugs are always popular. I mean, let's face it, who doesn't have a favorite mug? I know I do. So mugs are, are popular. Sentimental greetings, cards, and affordable and extra thoughtful ways to spread warm wishes. Um, yeah, we like stuff that's not like chain oriented, big box store oriented, and what's sentimental but doesn't look like it's mass produced. That makes sense. Couples hoodies, sweatshirts, and complimentary and matching styles are trending. Um, 14 year of year 14% year of your increases in searches on Etsy for couples hoodies. So I got news for you, couples stuff in general does really well. It's a great way to uh, to basically double your revenue. If you're offering not one item, but two items together for couples, a lot of people can do this for their niches. You know, if you have two, uh, a lot of people don't think in terms of like bulk items, but if you have items you can put together as a couple set, um, you're going to immediately double your income if those sell. So think about how you can do that for your business. All right, on to Mother's Day. That is a big one. And most people, most niches have stuff that they could sell for Mother's Day. So think about what you're selling. Can you remarket it, repurpose it, and sell it for Mother's Day to pick up on the huge amount of traffic coming for Mother's Day? Everyone knows you have to buy stuff for mom. Otherwise, you're a bad son or daughter. So help people buy stuff so they're not a bad son or daughter, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so here, puffy names and initials, a go-to gift. A go-to gift gets an update with added volume. Balloon-like lettering is appearing on personalized initial and name jewelry. Okay. Little luxuries, custom velvet makeup bags. Again, man, they're the velvet makeup bags. I mean, that's a huge thing. Next thing I know, my wife's going to be carrying around a velvet makeup bag. I got to ask her if she wants one because it's Etsy's telling me that Everyone's going to want a velvet makeup bag. Memories and mementos, lockets, charms, keepsake boxes, and picture frames are thoughtful ways to keep loved ones and special moments near. Uh, the gift of comfort. Shoppers can treat mom with cozy sweatshirts perfect for relaxing. I mean, who doesn't want a co cozy sweatshirt, right? Especially when with the cold. Decor trends. All right. So flexibility. Modular systems offering versatility continue to appeal to shoppers who want their furniture purchases to evolve with their lifestyles. All right. So flexibility in their furniture uh, is gaining popularity. Curve appeal. Gently rounded shapes continue to draw in shoppers looking to create cozy nooks throughout their homes. Curves are in, squares are out, apparently, when it comes to furniture. Denim decor, from throw pillows and quilts to placements, sturdy denim is making its way into living spaces. Okay, so denim is not only making a comeback when it, when it comes to clothing that we wear, it's making a comeback when it comes to furniture and living spaces. Um, I mean, next, are we going to see a denim blanket? I don't know. I don't think that's going to be comfortable, but maybe. All right, um, Boohoo details, am I saying that right, Boohoo? I had this whole conversation months ago where I think I was saying it wrong. It's not Boohoo, it's Boohoo, Boohoo, I don't know. I'm gonna get torn up in the comments because I'm saying it wrong. I, I just don't even like addressing this word anymore. <laughs> An appreciation of artistic handmade details continues to trend in interiors, 50% year of year increases on Etsy for Boohoo Wall Art. Boohoo Wall Art. Oh my God. All right, moving on. Expert woodwork. Expect growing interest in carved designs, interesting finishes, and collaging of wood veneers to form patterns. Listen, people are tired of buying mass produced furniture or mass produced stuff. They want that custom, that custom design, the custom woodwork that's not, that the, not everyone has in their living room. So if you can find it, or if you can make it and you could sell it, um, it is gaining in popularity. So I get it. 
earthy edges from organic modern look consider replicating the unfinished quality of live edge wood in harder materials like stone um all right so the a mix of materials together i know a lot of people are doing um the the inlays in the wood uh the epoxy in the wood you know that's been popular for the last couple of years it looks like now the wood wood mixed with stone uh if you can do it is is gaining in popularity statement bathroom show shoppers how beautiful bathrooms can be with attention to detail and a few standout pieces so accent different accent pieces um these are cool the picture if you're if you're listening is cool uh toothbrushes in a little stand Patinas that pop when working with metal, explore oxidized finishes, brush textures, and mirrored effects. Waves and wiggles. The evolution of squiggles and scallops is a bit softer and more graceful. Dynamic up undulating shapes and interest to furniture and accent pieces like lamps. All right, so these crazy looking lamps that have a lot of, uh, that are not uniform. They have a lot of, um, texture they have a lot of lines so that could be popular abstract forms from fresh look experiment with blob like shapes resembling me melting ice or lumpy cake batter okay <laughs> whatever that means uh alternatives to gallery wall help shoppers seeking streamlined spaces with bold wallpaper or large statement art instead of busy collections so gallery walls have made a comeback they're very very popular so it looks like we are already going away from that. I have to tell my wife that because she wants to do a gallery wall. Uh, she's been talking about it. Uh, I'm going to tell her it's not popular anymore. We're moving on to wallpaper, which I don't know if that's any better. Wallpaper, if you've ever tried to do it, is incredibly hard to do. And it's uh, really a test of a relationship. And if you can get through doing wallpaper, uh, we did a small space and we're yelling at each other. Yeah, it is very stressful and very hard to do. They make it seem so much easier on the HGTV. All right, style trends, clothing, versatile staples and power shoppers building capsule wardrobes, flexible seasonal pieces, uh, moody details, dark florals, soft goth styles, and jagged open work capture and Angus D vibe. Man, they are really testing my vocabulary here. 852% year over year increase in searches on Etsy for gothic clothing. So goth is making a comeback. Nine, what did I just say? 90s is making a comeback. Uh, goth was big in the 90s and here it comes again. Uh, painterly effects. Look for art to inspire fresh takes on ombre and tie-dye patterns. All right, tie-dye is coming back too. Uh, linen, a favorite fabric for spring. Linen feels upscale yet casual and is a go-to for minimalists and coastal grandmothers alike. So if you want to dress like grandma, you can wear some linen, I guess. I mean, linen is comfortable. You got to have some linen pants at least to walk around the beach with. Volume, fringe. Oh my goodness. Fringe pep, pep, pea plum silhouettes. Where are they getting, where are these getting, getting these words? Uh, and dimensional details like frayed edges amp up altitude of garments all right so there's that uh fresh palette gelato pastels neutrals bright acidic drops and etsy's 2024 color of the year very are set to rule the season there you go hard lines play with strong patterns like classic suiting inspired hound's tooth and pinstripe oh i don't even know what these words are Anyways, feminine accents, uh, lingerie. If you're in the clothing niche and you're like a fa like a fashion designer, you probably think I'm a moron right now because I can't. I don't know what these terms mean, but uh, anyway, that's neither here nor there. Don't don't hate me because I don't know what these words mean. Feminine accent, accents, lingerie inspired details give more modest styles a romantic twist. Look to incorporate corset features, ruching lace, ruffles, bows, silk, satin sheerness and roses there you go cozy materials plush fabrics like soft velour and corduroy along with hairy textures like mohair and extra comforting key items suits and sets soft blazers loose button down shirts uh, polo shirts bralettes collar maxi shirts strapless dresses sip dresses tanks there's some ideas for you if you're in that niche 
uh, spotlight on sweatshirts and knit trends, color gradients, cheerful stripes, uh, argyle variations, optical effects, uh, knit vests, bralettes, maxi dress, long cardigans, crew necks, polos, roll necks, v necks, and sets. I mean, a lot of this stuff is popular every single year. I don't see where this is vastly different than what is been popular before. Jewelry and accessories, charming pieces, like I said, 227 year. Uh, percent year of year increase in searches for charm necklaces. I covered that earlier. Um, combine different metals, especially upcycled materials. People love upcycled stuff. That's not going anywhere. Uh, even the you know, especially the younger generations, we want to see stuff be reused and not thrown away. So upcycled stuff is hugely, hugely popular. And if you have that in your niche or that's your focus of your niche is upcycled stuff. I know a lot of people have like, upcycled shops. Um, I think those are great niches to be in. All right, sentimental styles and nostalgic lockets uh, are meaningful gifts. See, this they covered a lot of this stuff earlier. I don't know why we're repeating it. Barrel bags, uh, not a velvet bag. Whew, getting away from the velvet, I guess. Consider the um, this elongated shape, the new baguette style. I thought a baguette was a piece of bread. I guess you can call a purse a baguette now. Anyways, um, Key items, cuff bracelets, long pendant necklaces, illusion earrings, choker necklaces, statement drop earrings. All right, guys, that, that was it. We, um, I got through it. You know, I struggled a little bit at times with some of the weird terminology. Maybe it's not weird for most of you. Maybe I am just a little special today. Uh, but that was the trend guide where we covered the gifting and accessories, decor trends, and style trends. Again, some of that may apply to you. None of it may apply to you. Think about, the takeaway from this is think about your niche, how you can capitalize on previous trends and maybe foresee some future trends within your niche based on the popularity of some of your sales and your items this year and kind of build off that for this coming year. The goal is to always take action and do something in your business and using certain things like this, certain knowledge and reports and stats and data to your advantage will just help you get a leg up and get prepared for this coming year so that you can consistently be growing year over year. That's what you want to do. If you're growing year over year, you're doing something right. Even if it's 5%, 10%, growth is good. Even if you've had a down year, take action, reinvest in your shop, reinvest in the things that you're doing in your business, and you can hopefully turn things around uh, for this coming year. Everyone has down years, but the key always is to grow year over year, month over month, week over week. Uh, that is your focus. Focus on beating yourself. Don't worry about the competition as much. If you are beating yourself and focusing on improving what you're doing, improving your numbers year over year, month over month, week over week, then you're going to get to the place that you want to get. You're going to reach the goals that you want to reach. So just remember that. Uh, I think that is always the biggest not always, but that is the takeaway from this episode uh, and is usually a common thing that I want to beat into your mind as you're thinking about your business and growing and improving your business. Uh, but that is it for this episode. So hopefully that helped you prepare uh, for the things to come in the 2024 year. Um, I also want to make sure that you download my free guide. You don't have it already, how to get to your first 100 sales and beyond. I always want to make sure I'm giving you guys uh, free good stuff to use to improve and grow. You guys can get that at handmadeandbeyond.com from slash 100 sales. Lots of strategies and best practices in there to help grow your shop as well. I'll be back soon with another great episode for you guys. Have an amazing rest of your day.